who was in the music business in the United States, and I'm not going to say who it is, and their family is a um, very large Muslim family. Um, and I was trying to negotiate how this person um, lived Islam and practiced Islam in the music business. And um, I did not. I was curious. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> so I didn't marry them for a reason because <laughs> there were some things in the end of the closer we got that I saw, and I was um, born a Muslim, but I wasn't always practicing myself. And um, where I where I started to delineate between what was Islam and what was what was this Muslim doing, and also what was culture. Yeah. And I um, know that you wrote about um, your relationship with Imran Khan, and I was wondering about how um, your family, uh, since you're, you're coming from a German background, received, um, did they believe that you were becoming Muslim for yourself and not for um, someone you were involved with, and also how do you deal with, um, if you would like to answer this question, <laughs> how do you deal with someone who is a Muslim who, um, I believe that you said he, he, he was fueled by faith, yes. um, which sort of gets you off the hook if we may not be practicing all of our faith. Oh, it's a very, very interesting point you raise. A lot of very important, interesting points. Number one, um, you know, that we must differentiate Islam from Muslims. <laughs> Number one, you know, I mean, not everybody is an example of, uh, of, uh, you know, the teachings of the Quran and and Muhammad peace be upon him. He's our ideal and our model to follow, but we are mere mortals and not everybody embodies it. But we have to aim high and strive, you know, for the best. Of course, um, you know, and the other one is to differentiate culture and religion. You know, what does the religion actually teach us, and what is cultural? You know, and that is uh, probably an issue for a, a lot of you who may be born Muslims. You know, and and for me, when people tell me, "Oh, you must do this, you must do that," where does it say that? You know, I question things. You know, oh, and then sometimes it comes, to, uh, you find out, well, that's actually not an Islam. It's a cultural thing. You know, and you can negotiate about the culture. I mean, certain religious teachings you cannot. So um, it's, it's a very important distinction. Now, uh, my family, actually I converted when my friendship with Imran was finished. So they actually reacted, well, if you're not getting married to him, why do you have to take up his religion? <laughs> and they didn't really understand, um, you know. But now, but uh, you know, now they understand that it really that it wasn't just another fad. And I must give it to my parents, you know. They also didn't quite understand MTV, and they always wanted me to do something more sensible. But they supported me through that, and they supported me through being a Muslim, you know. And uh, and I'm really grateful for that. And I pray that your parents are supportive of your choices too, however bizarre. They may appear to them, you know, and we must try and be like that uh, ourselves too. One day when we're, we are, you know, parents. Um, and uh, how do you deal? You know, it's very difficult to um, when you, you know, I find it is not easy. I mean, I had two attempts at marriage, and it's not easy really to, you know, be with another Muslim. Because he may have a very different understanding of Islam, even if he's, I mean, especially in my case, it was the opposite, when he's religious. You know, I mean, I was married to a Moroccan man, and suddenly knew who I was with my website and everything else, and suddenly, you know, it's like he was, he put me in prison. I wasn't allowed to even to speak to men anymore at all. I wasn't allowed to work. I wasn't, even when I went to a lecture and asked questions, that was, uh, and the, my lecture was a male, that was a problem, etc., etc. you know, and it was like the opposite. So now I'm thinking for myself, rather I'd have somebody a little bit more li liberal and let me do the religion. You know, it's, I, I, you know, you, it's a, it's a process of evolvement. You, it's, I mean, it's a great blessing when you find someone who's exactly on the same page as you. But if not, as long as you keep strong and you do your, you know, uh, your religion, and he lets you do that, you know, that's that's the most important thing, really. You know, but if you see someone, you know, if you see that there's a lot of bad stuff going on all the time, and 
you know, then of course it's your choice to say, no, I do want a cleaner life, you know. And um, incidentally, I, you know, I probably have, um, you know, moved on also from the one who has brought me to the religion. You know, I still sometimes, I'm in touch, but, you know, um, you know, people do their different things. And um, uh, in the end of the day, it counts just what you do between you and God. We can't, you, we mustn't um, show our religiosity by getting the other person to do the exact same. Just worry about ourselves. That's, that's enough, you know, enough of a task. The inner struggle, the inner striving. Anybody else burning with curiosity? Sorry, I love your accent, so I feel like talking <laughs> in a British accent sometimes. <laughs> Forgive me. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I had a question. So I'm a convert, so congratulations for us on your conversion. Oh, and um, also, so I converted. Uh, I think one of the biggest um, like challenges for me is to adjust to society now because you know I am I live in America and it's a bit different from like Islamic culture. But along with that, how do you? Um, like how how are your friends like your close friends or family members? I know you talked about how your family was very supportive, but I wanted to know how you adjusted to like how your friends reacted because for me it's very different. I had a lot of male friends like they come to hug me and I'm like no I can't hug you. It's all I know <laughs> all of that. Yeah. I have the same of course you know no I don't hug men anymore. Um, you know and the kissing on the cheeks you know I went through phases at some point I'm like oh, no a Muslim a Muslim woman doesn't so I try to do that but you know it's. Um, it, uh, you're putting people off also a little bit like that. So one has to negotiate. Uh, you know, it's a, I think it's a flexible and fluid thing. Sometimes you're a bit more like that, and sometimes you. Now I'm a little bit more relaxed again, you know, and because you can offend people as well, you know, um, and they don't necessarily all understand our value system. But also even like to fight for your right to drink water at a party, you know, and not be not drink alcohol. I, I mean, it's a struggle sometimes. It was a struggle, you know. Um, and, and, and things like that. So it takes time and it takes um, effort. And my real friends are still my real friends from Germany and also in London. They respect me for my choices. And some of the superficial people I had to let go of, you know. And, and that's fine because you can't be friends with everybody all your life anyway. You know, and naturally, I, you know, you don't want to hang out anymore in, in bars or nightclubs where they, you know, just play rave music and the idea is to get laid and get wasted. You know, why would you want to be in such an environment? So, you know, you have to eventually make choices and, you know, one can negotiate certain things, but, you know, maybe, I mean, I, 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 I sit with people who drink, you know, over dinner or whatever, but I may not go to such extreme places anymore, you know. And you, so we all have to make our choices, even me and with the entertainment industry, you know. Even after MTV, I mean, a good thing that, you know, it all came to a close and everything, because what was uh, not going to be relevant for me anymore just fell away. And afterwards, I had an entertainment show, cultural program on NBC Europe. And, you know, I had to present so many programs that conflicted with my value system. So many cultural things, you know, I don't know. Um, you, as you can imagine, your transvestite shows or pornographic art, and you know, you can't as a presenter say, don't go to that, don't watch this, that's also terrible, you know. So eventually I realized, you know, I constantly had this uh, conflict. So I had, if my faith was to grow, I had to, you know, do something different. And, um, you know, so we make our choices and uh, God guides us. And in the end of the day, you know, Islam is a religion that you don't just inherit. It takes a commitment, it takes intellectual engagement, questioning, and, and, you know, and work. And, um, and in fact, for born Muslims as well, because you can't inherit it. You have to discover it for yourself and sometimes make choices and even guide your parents, because your parents may have a more cultural um, mindset from back home, whatever, whereas you learned, hey, you, as an American, you learned Islam is actually also can be practiced very well here. So you got to take your people by by the hand. So you know it's um, um, in the end of the day. Also, I'm I'm fully in favor of you know follow your passion. Follow listen. Try and listen to your inner voice in terms of your choices, in terms of your career. You know, follow your heart, follow your passion, and try and do the best. You know, how can you, each and every one of you, make a contribution? One day, you know, leave your legacy. 
what will you be remembered for one day, you know? And may it be something good, something positive, inspired by your faith. It could be, you know, and excelling in your job, whatever you do, is that is also Islam, you know? Show, you know, lead by example, you know? Be just, be a really good person, do what you do well, be honest, honor your agreements, you know, um, you know, excel in your jobs and try and make a positive contribution one way or the other, you know, and and that's that's being a good Muslim. And then you're doing, you know, the, a, a real great service. So, you know, don't worry. If you love God, God loves you. And God tests the ones he loves. And who will remember who was most tested? The prophets, you know, what hardship they faced. And, uh, you know, so if you're facing some difficulties, don't worry. I also had to learn this, um, you know, uh, there's this, uh, for example, Rumi, he likens difficulties to chickpeas being boiled in hot water till they're sweet, soft and delicious and, and very tasty. You know, and that is what happens with our soul when we go through difficulties. Like me at the time of my conversion, you know, all these difficulties happened. Um, certain Sufis taught me to see the events from a spiritual perspective and to see, you know, as a believer, everything that happens is good. Whether it's a challenge and, and a test, it's good for you because it strengthens your soul, it purifies you, and it makes you come out shining and strong and radiant. And if something good happens, you also say Alhamdulillah. You say Alhamdulillah, praise be to God, whatever happens, because you know whatever happens is good. And uh, sometimes, you know, it also, you know, I tell you, I mean, I could talk for a long time. Um, you know, I have also now, you know, like in society, you know, certain dinner parties or whatever, you know, and I get attacked, Islamophobic attacks kind of thing, you know. And just, uh, you know, and I'm writing about this in my book, you know, and I go home, I was disheartened, open the Quran, and it says, you can't make the deaf listen and the blind see. You know, something like that. Oh, Prophet, you're just there to declare the message. You know, the rest is up to God. God will do the rest, you know. You can't make the deaf listen and, and, and make the blind see, you know. And, um, and also it says, you know, when people um, attack you in your religion or, uh, you know, just say a uh, peace kind of thing. Pray for them and move away. Don't bother yourself, you know, too much. No need to get into uh, too antagonistic I mean, it's easier said than done, and I've sometimes lost my cool too. Um, but, uh, you know, we could only try. And then, as it says, you know, and I kept reading this as I went along, you know, it says, when, um, when you know, something repel an evil w with something better, so that your enemy becomes like an old trusted friend. And um, when Satan stirs you to anger, seek refuge in God. You know, so if you do lose it at some point, just pray to God in the end of the day and, you know, come back, you know, read Quran and so on. Yeah, this is, um, you know, may God be with you. And I know as a convert, we have a lot of issues, a lot of challenges, you know, and um, eventually those people from your old friends who really love you and love you in your core, they will stay your friends, like your family will carry on loving you. And, um, you know, and some people, you can't be with everybody, that's fine. You'll make lots of new friends. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, so my other question for you was, um, cause it hasn't been a year for me yet, it's approaching a year in late March. And um, I, ha I also have love a lot of, um, like, reverted friends. And some of them I see are, like, on the D more than ever. And then others, like, time passes and they stop praying and, you know, they don't fast Ramadan anymore. I wanted to know what it is for you personally that has kept you on the deep. Yeah, very good question also. Give them my book, I would say, number one. Yeah, because, you know, it's actually the spiritual, it's the spiritual element, you know, it's the spirituality. It's also finding people um, of like, who are like-minded, try and keep the company of spiritual people, you know, and seek out good teachers. That is really the essence, you know, to be sometimes, to be with spiritual people sometimes at least. One can't all the time, but sometimes, you know. And then, so I try to find a good spiritual teacher. I mean, I mean you're blessed here. You have uh, the Imam Swipe Web, I suppose. And, you know, probably some, I mean, Hamza, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf and Dr. William Chittik. I mean, they're amazing teachers uh, here in America. 
and uh, to try and seek out those spiritual teachers. And when they give talks, you know, that is what um, revives your faith, you know, and keeps you going. And, I mean, you'll read it in my book, you know. I entered a spiritual group and a Sufi group kind of thing. And, you know, it's that what kept, it's, that's the spiritual thing, you know, and the company and the learning. You know, the reading about, like, I would, like this Ibn Hazm said, you know, it's reading about the deen, you know. There's so many wonderful books about Islam, training of your character. You know, there's um, a book by uh, Abdul Qadir Al Jalani. It's called Divine Openings, uh, Fat Arabani. Whenever you read it, it's like medicine for your soul. Or Al Ghazali, Rumi, you know, these classical scholars and, um, and, and poets and so on, um, you know, and classical sheikhs, inspired teachers. It's that kind of, you know, this reading as well. Sitting with them, keeping calm with your spiritual people, all that. That's what kept it going. Yeah, inshallah. Pray. God will help you. Pray. Anybody else? I have a question. Um, okay. I think one thing that's often. Oh, was there somebody here? No, I mean, you, you can go. Oh, actually, yeah. you get first dibs. Ladies yeah. first. <laughs> Can you practice Islam and not be a Muslim or be a non-practicing Muslim? Well, um, um, sorry, say that again. Be a non-practicing Muslim. You can be, yeah, a lot of uh, Muslims are just passport Muslims. You know, they're born Muslim and they don't practice. Absolutely. But it doesn't mean that's a good thing. Um, you know, you can, I mean, you know what? What makes you a Muslim? How, when do you become a Muslim? You say, um, uh, I believe in God, um, you know, uh, la ilaha illallah Muhammad and Rasulullah. There's no God but God, and Muhammad is his messenger, is one of his messengers. That's when you say those words, when you believe that, you're a Muslim already. And the rest, then you, there's a lot that comes with it. And you know, you, you have time. You can't. Um, I, you know, you, when you're ready for that, when you're ready to pray, when you're ready, when you feel convinced intellectually, you can do it, even though you, you can just say those words and you're a Muslim, you get started. You don't need to, um, to know everything, you know, and, um, and, you, and you don't need to practice everything. That is what eventually also encouraged me to, to actually take that step, um, because, you know, we have time. When the revelation came, was um, was given in um, you know 600 um, you know to the Prophet Muhammad, it took 23 years till it was completed, and that is the time we have to actually internalize the religion. So we can take our time, and in the end of the day, it's between us and God. There's nobody who who tells nobody told me you must do this, you must do that. That's the good thing when you're, you know, there are some advantages when you're not born into a Muslim family because you just do everything voluntarily. And I was a bit of a rebel when I was young and, you know, on MTV and everything else. I was always a, not a, a rebel, a little bit, you know, and a trouble for my parents. And I wanted to go out late and everything else. I didn't respect rules much, you know, I had a problem with rules. And, um, and um, you know, and suddenly when I, you know, now that I realize that rules come from above. Rules and recommendations and so on come from above. There's no one here in this world telling me. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm reading what God wants. And so I find it easy to submit. And things make sense. I do things now that I didn't do when they just came from people kind of thing, you know. It's, uh, it's an interesting phenomenon. It certainly has surprised my parents. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, I uh, hope I answered your question a little bit, but do you have any other questions? No, no, no. Well, I hope you'll get um, get some inspiration um, from reading my book, inshallah, because there's a much more detail, of course. Anybody else? Yes. But having Christi what? Can you go closer? To a that? battle between Christianity and Islam. Well, it's, it, it's, it takes 
you know, God will guide you. In the end of the day, God will guide you. You know, there's um, just take all the time you need. Take all the time you need. You know, one day you may, you know, you may feel ready. I certainly didn't imagine that one day I was would convert. I just sort of plunged into it, into this reading and all of this. You know, with no plan really. It just I was just following my passion and my interest that suddenly developed. You know, um, well. Do you know, and I didn't even compare that much in detail. Um, uh, what can I say? You know, I don't want to, um, you know, diss any other religion really either. You know, um, all religions are ways to God in the end of the day and, and lead to salvation. It's just, you know, if you, I mean, Islam in the end of the day is the last religion. It's the final religion. So certain inconsistencies that were there, uh, maybe in Christianity, um, were resolved in Islam, you see. I mean, Christianity, say the Bible, I mean, the Quran. The Quran is a book, it's God speaking on the tongue of the Prophet. God giving the revelations, it's the direct word of God. When you read the Quran, you, it's like God speaking to you. It's very powerful. And sometimes you have a feeling as if the Quran is alive. You know, like, you know, like I was trying to describe before, you know, and sometimes when you have a problem and you open the Quran, you find the answer there. It really is something extraordinary. I mean, one I, a small little diversion. Just when I was a new Muslim, you know, a Jewish guy came to me and he said, oh, you know, and Islam just incites to violence. It's this violent religion. And I knew it's not true, you know. And this big translation of the Quran. I thought, try and find this passage where it says it, you know. Where the hell I don't know. Open it. There it was. I mean, it was like a little miracle, you know. I mean, anyway, um, so so it is alive, like it's, you know, there's something there. Um, but, but this is not it. I would say take all the time in the world, just read and explore. And one day when it says click, yeah, I mean, you know, I realize there are inconsistencies in, in, in other religions, you know. I feel this makes more sense. But you may think, well, you're not ready, you can't commit to everything because there comes a lot with it you know um, so so then just think you don't you you I wouldn't do anything in a rush and only when you really feel ready to pray and to do to, to you know and also the other thing is when you have difficulties with certain issues put them to the side just look at the overriding spirit look at the overriding spirit you know look at uh, the, the religion as a totality don't nitpick don't look for faults and, and nitpick just look at look at the overriding spirit and really read. You know, it says the religion was revealed. The first word of the re first revelation, the first word was Ikra. Read. You know, and the prophet said, I can't read. Read. You know, and basically read. You know, we are, we're meant to read. And it says all the time, use your reason. You know, there are signs, um, you know, out there on the horizons and within ourselves, you know. And um, just reflect, read think you know there's nothing like blind faith it you actually you can reason you that you know things make sense we don't believe just yeah we believe in the unseen which we can't actually see right now we believe in the unseen that is part of our faith but there's you know the certain doctrines that are really difficult to understand that's not there in Islam actually um, it's it's a I was surprised by the very clear intellectual message you know the message is very clear you pray to one God and you know, God is there, and our savior, our destiny, our origin, etc. And um, you know, so so I can only um, recommend you inform yourself, read, meet Muslims. Don't take everything they tell you always uh, on, fa on face value. Question things. You know, look into it yourself and find really good teachers. You know, try and find really good teachers, majority teachers. Uh, I mean, um, you know. People, not fringe people, you know, who like nobody follows kind of thing, only some weird extremists or something like that. No, find people that uh, are accepted by the majority, you know, and um, yeah, and, and read and see where the journey takes you. I had one question myself. Oftentimes in faith communities, the, uh, the value of entertainment uh, is overlooked. So, you know, you being part of the entertainment industry for so long, 
Uh, one question is, what is the value of the entertainment industry uh, for, for uh, you know, faith communities and uh, communities of, uh, of multiple cultural and diverse realities? And also, what do you see as, uh, what do you envision uh, the role of Muslims uh, in terms of participating in the Western entertainment industry? Well, I mean, first of all, you know, we're human beings. We, we need a little bit of entertainment. We need relaxation. We need relaxation. We can't just all work, 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 pray, work hard. No, you know, we need to relax sometime as well. And, um, and you know, ideally we need to find halal entertainment or at least entertainment that isn't conflicting with our religious uh, beliefs. So, you know, there's music that can be have a negative impact, like maybe hard rock, metal, or I don't know, hardcore, this or that or the other, you know, that maybe that incites the lower aspects of the soul to doing something negative. And there's music that is uplifting, you know, that uh, guides you to be, a, you know, a better human being that gives wings to the soul, they say, you know, like, and, and actually inspires you to God. You know, and um, and there's there are more and more Muslim artists. So I I think you know we we Muslims, it's very important that that we enter the um, the uh, world of culture and entertainment with our faith. You know, and produce artworks like we saw the Taj Mahal. You know, like uh, like this beautiful Islamic art and architecture, like they always used to do. You know, and there was there always used to be entertainment, halal entertainment, you know, and in hospitals, in fact, music was used for healing because they knew and storytelling was used for healing in the hospitals in, in Egypt, for example, and Iraq, you know, it's a very important part of our lives, but let it be, let it be positive, you know, our soul is very delicate and we need to find um, art and entertainment, you know, uh, that, that uh, inspires our soul, that inspires us to God and does not take us away. If it takes you away from God, whatever it is you're doing, it's not good in the end of the day. You know, um, even love relationships, you know, in marriage, love and, um, you know, intimate relationships between man and woman, lovemaking brings you closer to God. But if it's outside of marriage, it takes you away. So it depends on you know how you how you do it. Or science can be positive in the service of the good, in the service of trying to alleviate illnesses and serving humanity. Or it could be to produce I don't know nuclear bomb to kill a lot of people. So it, uh, more, like most things, it comes down to our need, our intention, you know, and um, and and that's a very powerful concept in Islam. The intention, you know, actions are judged by their intentions, you know. And uh, sorry, your second question was? So I'm all for halal entertainment and please more of it, please try. Anybody here wants to become a journalist, filmmaker, you know, a musician, um, I, I encourage you. Uh, we need more. And um, you know, because the arts were very important in Islam, in the history of Islam. That is what often brings people also to Islam poetry, the art, you know, it's the music and so on, the food, you know, so it's important. Don't all become financiers and, and accountants and engineers. It's a good thing, it's important, but, you know, there's also other fields. Okay, the other question? The second question, you know, part of which you, I think you did touch upon, but basically what steps do we take as a community to sort of enter this, uh, this sort of, this Western uh, uh, entertainment industry? How do we, how do we make it in? Or do we create an alternative, or do we try to make changes within the current paradigm or structure that exists? Yeah, I mean, you know, I know there's certain rap that is um, quite uh, Islamically inspired, you know. Just, you know, you don't have to preach about Islam, just the, the concepts, you know, just the ideas, you know. And I know, um, yeah, so it's, it's, I think it's almost, what can I say, it's not virgin territory, but, um, you know, we, I don't have the answers to tell you the truth. How exactly? I mean, um, I don't know, are there any Muslim channels here? Probably not really, no. So maybe we, you know, I do believe we need to create one, by the way. I have um, devised um, an entertainment show, a culture and entertainment show, fueled with, um, I mean, by faith kind of thing you know, MTV style, but uh, showing um, sort of, um, you know, art and culture and entertainment that uh, Muslims would like. And I can't find um, a TV station to place it on. 
you know, I, I, I'm looking, I'm still looking. So it needs to be developed, it needs to be created. You see, Muslims are not financing, Muslims haven't really understood the importance of the media. You know, I mean, there's a lot of money in, 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 in the Muslim world, say, in the Middle East and so on, but are they spending it? For um, you know, for for this kind of stuff, they don't understand how powerful the media is, and you know how we must uh, support artists. So you know, my co-publisher of the book, uh, they are called Awakening, and they actually are a Muslim music label. They have Ma Mahar Zain. I don't know, has anybody heard of Mahar Zain? Yeah, they published Mahar Zain. They published also Sami Yusuf. So you know, it does exist, but we need a lot more of it, mm, and also books. It took me two years to find an English publisher uh, who would publish my book. Now I have two publishers and they're very small, both of them, you know. So it's, um, you know, we need to create more outlets, that's for sure. And, but, but not just um, do the alternative, um, you know, small little things. But I, I really believe we need to be in the mainstream and enter the mainstream, be, try and get on TV, and uh, work in television and uh, film. You know, there's the Doha Film Institute nowadays in Qatar. There's something going on in Abu Dhabi. You know, and it's between uh, some of them are, I, I think, even have co productions, both of those, uh, the one in Abu Dhabi and uh, in Doha, between Hollywood and, and so on, to, to also build bridges with uh, films, you know, and, and music. So ideally, ideally, the best is to enter the mainstream, you know, with your faith in such a way, you know, that you inspire people. You can't use these um, the entertainment to preach, you know, no, but uh, that's not what, what artists do. Uh, but still your art will be fueled by your faith. So, um, you know, ideally we enter the mainstream. That's, that would be the best, you know, with your faith. And not just to, um, say if you're a journalist, don't just report on, on Islamic issues. Report on whatever is out there. You know, you're a citizen of America. You know, you, you, you know whatever issue, you know, if there's, uh, I don't know, the, an environmental crisis or something, you know, we're all in the same boat. And you just have your, you know, you bring your own uh, heritage or your own perspective into the story, I mean, you know, slightly, like everybody does. I mean, no news is neutral. Everybody comes from a certain perspective, although it's meant to be neutral, but it comes from a certain perspective. So, you know, I, I would, can only encourage you to try and get into the mainstream and how you do it, like how everybody else does it. You apply for a job and you try and you, you are an intern, you work your way up. That is how, 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 how you do it, you know, yeah. All right, last question. It better be good. <laughs> Make it good. <laughs> um, oh no, there's another one. There's a gentleman. We have a second but last. Penultimate. Well, it's hard for me to remember. The last question. Did you have any doubts in the religion after 9/11, and how is like the your society, your friends, your family's reactions to your? decision of conversion? Well, um, you know, 9-11, I was actually in LA and I got stuck there for a week because no flights were going from Lax Airport. Um, and, you know, obviously it was extremely, sh it was a hor horrific shock. And what it prompted me to do was to look deeper into um, violence and uh, jihad and, you know, these kind of ideas. And I'm writing about exactly that also in my book. Um, you know, and the fact that, of course, the greater jihad is the jihad means striving. It doesn't mean holy war. It means striving in the path of God. And the greater jihad is the uh, striving against your own bad self. You know, and there's absolutely no violence, nothing, no basis um, of, for violence in Islam against innocent civilians. You know, um, so it says, there's a good verse in the Quran, isn't there, that um, whoever kills an innocent soul, it is like killing the whole of humanity. And um, so, you know, no, I didn't have doubts in my faith, of course, but I was sh shaken, um, shaken and, um, you know, by, by how Muslims could do that. Because 
who suffered afterwards? I mean, it's Muslims more than anybody else because, you know, we were like persona non grata. Um, so they damaged more Muslims more than anybody else. So, um, no, and you know, I never had um, doubted my faith. Thank God. I never doubted I made the right decision. I had maybe doubts in Muslims, you know, who disappointed me, or doubts in, in other people, or in contracts, whatever. Um, but, you know, my faith through all the difficulties just strengthened because even when, you know, when people lead you, let you down, God is always there. So it, it just anything like that that happened strengthened my faith. And my, um, yeah, my parents at first didn't really understand why, but, uh, you know, they were then, you know, accepting and supportive. They wait till I'm finished with my prayer, they don't serve me pork. Um, friends respected me, respected my choices, the real friends, you know, and uh, were almost impressed and, and find it inspiring. And, um, yeah, and only the press reacted quite negatively, you know, the German press. That was quite horrific, but, you know, um, ten years later, I'd gone on Hajj, and um, a journalist asked me, "Can I do an interview of you, ex-Muslim, uh, being a sorry ex-MTV presenter, now a Muslim?" Uh, and I had refused her three years previously, but somehow after my Hajj, I felt I had this confidence, and I felt, you know, it's now or never. I mean, I can always remain quiet, or maybe I'll just do it, and I did it, and. A really positive article was uh, put in the German press, you know, and then a lot of other positive articles followed. And then suddenly a book agent contacted me and asked me, uh, would you like to write your story in a book? So this is how the German book came about, you know, alhamdulillah. So, uh, so it's, it's all good now, you know, so, um, yeah, even in the press. <laughs> and all the gentlemen. Uh, actually, it's not a question, but uh, just I have three main important comments in general. Make it short, please. Yeah, no, because very, this was meant to be a question. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's very short. Uh, first comment is uh, I would like to say thank you to you. And uh, really, uh, I like the idea you are advertising for Islam, okay? Uh, and I'm sure you are a good messenger for Islam. As there is a theory I, I studied before that famous people always easily to convince others. You know, you are a media, uh, famous, uh, MTV, so it's easy to people to get your point easily. Like, uh, in instance, maybe you laugh at if Messi has a comment, or maybe if he changed to Islam, okay, Messi of Barcelona. Half the planet Earth will be Islam, you know. I believe so. This is the first comment. The second comment is uh, the Islam or uh, the Jewish and Christianity in brief. It was started from day one when Adam and Eve were uh, created. Okay, and you know that there is a kind of evil is fighting them from day one. And then we, when they get to Listen, Earth... Let's discuss this in private afterwards. Listen, thank you very much. Yeah, okay. Just, uh, just commenting that it's at the end, uh, just Prophet Muhammad wants to make it short and brief uh, to complete the picture, it's, uh, which is the, there is no God except one God, and Prophet is the... Thank you. Muhammad, Prophet thank God. you very much. Thank you. Okay, let's discuss it afterwards, because I, yeah. I think the students have stayed for a very long time. <laughs> All right, inshallah, with that, please, everyone, please give thank a hand. You. All right, so please be civil right now, inshallah. We're going to have a nice uh, meet and greet with uh, uh, Sister Christiane, inshallah. Uh, for the fact that this book is an absolute gem, and a lot of you guys buy stuff from Etsy, and you guys buy stuff from online, online shopping and whatnot, the price of this gem is only $20, which is plus five. So that's $25, yeah, exactly. So it's pocket chains, you know, in, you know, if you buy 24 karat gold, this is 25 karat Jumna, this is 25 karat Blackstone up in here. So inshallah, please, uh, you can come here, you can, uh, uh, you can talk to uh, Sister Christiane as well, uh, take selfies with her, take pictures with her, whatever you want to do.